Well, the other story we'd love your thoughts on today, parents in particular, if you have kids who might be considered at risk of developing type 2 diabetes, if they maybe are a bit overweight and carry a number of other secondary risk factors, would you object to them being screened every couple of years for type 2 diabetes? It's a big issue in this country. Type 2 diabetes affects about 5% of all adults, according to data from the ABS back in 2017 and 18. If we can so nip it in the bud at childhood, it so could be a big impact. diabetes type 2, which type is two. a reflection of your diet more than anything, isn't it? That's my understanding well, of yeah. diabetes type I mean, 2. Type 1 is the sort of thing you're born with. And that's those, right. Uh, that's where you have to take injections. This is my sort of rudimentary basic yeah. knowledge of what diabetes is. Type 1's autoimmune. We'll speak to an expert about this in more detail to clarify it. But the type 2 kind, as recently as this morning, the Cambridge University released a report to say that if you just clean up your diet with fresh fruit and vegetables, not even that much, you can prevent the onset of type 2 diabetes and even reverse it. So this recommendation is that children should be screened every two years yep. for whether or not they have type 2 diabetes. Yeah. Age 10, around puberty, that kind of age group, carrying a bit of weight, maybe from a bunch of other risk factor categories. It doesn't sort of sound like a really revolutionary idea that would get much blowback, right? It sounds pretty basic to me, in uh, sort of in the in the sort of the category. Maybe, but then there may be sensitivities around singling out children because they come from a certain certain category of lifestyle factors. Is that a bit mean? Is it, a, is it going to give mean. them a hang-up later in life? Diab- type 2 diabetes would put a fair strain on the health system, though, it I does. would imagine. So if we can prevent any form of disease, no matter what it means or who's got it, isn't that a good thing? Let's find out. Deb Schofield is the General Manager of Health Services Diabetes WA. Deb, a couple of news stories about diabetes, in particular type 2 in the news this morning. Let's talk about the screening first. What do you think of this concept? Well, um, first of all, um, just to say that um, type 2 diabetes is, is far more complex than, um, than just those lifestyle factors you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's really important because people often uh, feel a lot of guilt and shame that they have developed type 2 diabetes. And I think that it's really important to recognise that it's got a strong genetic component. Your family history is a big a big issue in this, okay. as is, you know, as is your ethnicity. So mm. that's um, some of the things that we're talking so about. It's not you know, just like, diet. No, not just diet, but of course that does have an impact. But it's not the only thing. I think sometimes people think, uh, you know, particularly in adults, they think you're fat, you're over forty, you're unfit. It's your own fault. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and, that's right. Uh, and there's, it's far more complex than that, and we should really cut some slack there and just say well you know it, it it's tough to manage it's you know some some people have all of those sort of bad lifestyle factors and they never get type 2 so you know it's just get getting that one in context first of all just yeah. to, sure. for all we, the people living with type 2 out there but you make a, you may raise a really valid point that when you start singling kids out and saying hey you need to be tested for type 2 diabetes and where are they going to do it potentially at school is that a risky move um, not at all. The, we, we do know that type 2 diabetes in children is on the rise. Whilst it's still small numbers, the, the trends are not good, um, particularly for our, um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, children and also for other, other ethnic groups such as um, you know, uh, Pacific, Pacific Islanders, um, also people from India, people from... Uh, Southeast Asia, mm-hmm. um, people from the Middle East. So, and in particular, it's if children have obesity and um, are overweight, or overweight or obese, should I say, and have other risk factors such as family history and that ethnicity. So, it's not just overweight yeah. and obese children. It's they've got these other risk factors that really, sure. really put them behind the eight ball with type two. And and the earlier we can pick it up the better the outcomes, and I think that's a really important message. Yeah, and we appreciate you clearing this up and informing us this morning. Nine double two double one eight eighty two. what's your experience being like with type 2 diabetes? Or maybe you work in schools where these tests um, would potentially take place. So we're talking about new guidelines being released, recommending that a child who is at risk of diabetes type 2 should be screened every two years. Um, Deb Schofield, you're the General Manager of Health Services Diabetes WA. Uh, That'd work, wouldn't it? 
Well, the the other thing to to note is that these guidelines that there, there have been some um, Australasian consensus guidelines that have just been released, which is what I guess we're talking about around this. In in reality, this has been this is not new, and uh, you know it's not sort of not new information. But it's great that that all of the expert groups have weighed all the evidence and have come up with some consensus guidelines. And it's not about testing children in school so much as it's information for um, GPs and allied health professionals and people that work in the health system mm -hmm. to be aware and to therefore follow through with, with these guidelines that really will help um, clarify things for the health system. I know Perth Children's Hospital do a brilliant job of um, really supporting children and families that um, have been been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes so you know it'd be really great to have that as a as a good knowledge base and a good um guide you know guidance right across the health system particularly in you know remote communities where you know we we want to pick up on type 2 diabetes in, in aboriginal children for sure deb you mentioned that rates are increasing for kids how about in terms of management are we getting better at the management of type 2 diabetes in australia well, I think we understand what we need to do. What do whether, you need to do? Sorry, Deb, how, well, do, how do you how do you manage it in, in you know yeah. one of the simple ways? Well, the simple way. I mean, apart from everyone will think about, oh, it's you know, what, what are you eating? But it's far more than that. It's about um, really helping. In the case, let, let's just talk about children with type two for for a moment, and then perhaps mm. adults. But type. Type 2 in children, it's a real family affair. People, you know, you, you really want to support and surround that family. We don't know what circumstances they're in. We don't know what other challenges they're facing, but really support them to make meaningful changes that, that will work for them in with cultural sensitivity, um, you know, understanding their situation. What might be and a help change, them to make what, those changes. What's an example of a change? And, and actually, we'll open it up to yeah. our listeners. If anyone is out there, you live mm. with diabetes type 2 or you know someone, well, how do they go about treating it? 922 Come on uh, on the radio if you want to share your experience. might help some other people. Yeah, and, you know, also that there'll be medication involved at times as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so that 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 may well be necessary to to help with this, but obviously you want that child to to be able to get to a healthier weight. So there may be some changes, physical activity. You know what what is the family's eating habits like? What are the family's physical activity um, so, habits like? You okay. know, and and supporting them, not judging them, but no. supporting them well, to shouldn't be make changes. Mm. Yeah. Um, that, that, I think, is the hardest part. I talk to a lot of other parents who m maybe have a child who has celiac. You know, they suddenly discover you've got a gluten intolerant child in the family and having to cook one child different food becomes a, a burden on the family, but there's also jealousy among siblings because one child can enjoy meat pies and pasta for dinner, but the other one has to have something different all the time. What I'm hearing yes. from you, Deb, is that it's important the entire family makes changes. Be mature about it, don't you? Mm. I think so. I think it's, um, you know, it, it's a bit like when people stop smoking, you know, if, if other people in the family are smoking, it's oh, really yeah. hard. Yep. So it's that, you know, it's that kind of thing. But the other thing with children and all of us really is making sure they get enough sleep. That's part of the recommendation. Um, you know, so okay. uh, watch that's out for screen time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's, that's really uh, interesting. Can you reverse type 2 diabetes, Deb? Uh, what you can do is um, with type two diabetes, you, you can you can damp it down. I mean, we we don't actually use the word remission in Australia, although it is used in other countries. But you can actually um, uh, you know cause it to to be pushed into the background with the right changes. Okay. Uh, right. But that's not for it, not everyone, but yes, it is possible for some. Yeah, good to hear mm. from you, Deb. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Yep. Deb is the General Manager of Health Services of Diabetes WA, and we want to hear from you today on, on how you manage type 2 diabetes in your household. Yeah, give us a call, 922 Deb, thank you very much for your time.